Hey, everybody. Welcome to part two of my interview with Alexandra Hoffman. Uh, we just got done with a fantastic conversation about her, her business, about resilience and how she helps her clients to become more resilient, to be more strategic, all those things. So if you're jumping to this episode, go back and listen to part one first so you can get to know her there first and then come back and listen to this part of the episode. So Alexandra, let's have a coaching conversation. And as we do, uh, what, what would you like to focus on? So thank you, Kyle. I, I believe my, my question, and I think it will tie in nicely with the part of the conversation we're just having during the podcast. It's, um, you know, because I'm, I'm a business owner. So the idea is really how do we, how do I um, include change management in my approach? You asked me earlier during the podcast, how do you, com- you know, convince uh, quote unquote, uh, people to talk about growth mindset. That's just an example here, or to follow the growth mindset, um, pr- you know, rules. I would say that um, uh, that are out there, and really, it's about you know in- implementing using change management and making sure that people people are willing to change. So I have this question. I know it's not clear, but when you get coached, it's at the beginning that never really clear. Um, when I do interact with my prospects or even existing clients, how do I make sure that I, it's not about convincing them, but it's about influencing them. So the change comes from them, not from me, basically, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I believe so. I'm hearing you say, when you work with your clients, that the result is that they're convinced that they they've convinced themselves they're confident that what needs to happen is uh, that they're willing to make changes but it's an internal from from within they've made that decision is that is that right yeah yeah and it shouldn't come from it shouldn't come from me and and sometimes i find it's uh it's hard not to just go in and just uh mm. um How can what's the best word? I'm trying to, I'm looking for the best word here. Um, just telling them what to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. When we're done with this conversation, what, what result do you want to have? Hmm. Uh, maybe have at least one tip okay. that I can have in my, in my mind that I can keep in mind for my next conversation. <laughs> okay. Awesome. If you were to, achieve that what would that do for you in that conversation um i'm I'm very very sorry kyle i just heard my son crying so i missed your question i'm sorry about this please repeat your question (laughs) if you were to it's the mom brain that mom's brain that took over for one second i'm sorry that's okay no i appreciate that you tuned in with me and told me that because that's very good (laughs) for self-awareness obviously uh if you got that one tip or once you have that one tip yeah. and you're having a conversation with a prospect, what yes. will that achieve for you in that conversation? Oh, to increase my sales. Okay. Okay. Um, talk to me a little bit about the issues, the, the headaches that you experience when you're in these conversations with people that, that quote, need convincing. Ooh, um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, let me let me reflect on the countless conversations. Um, well, sometimes, and it happens to all of us. So you know, I'm not I'm not judging anyone here uh, or criticizing anyone. Um, sometimes it's just because. They're so focused on their day-to-day stuff that they they forgot to, to just sit and take the time to reflect. And the thing is, I don't want to come across as I know better than they that the, than them what they need. That's not at all my point. But once we all agree to have this conversation, basically to, to work together or to start something together. Sometimes I can feel that uh, reluctance to change. 
And I've actually had people just changing their mind last minute. Mm. Last minute. What role does... Oh, I'm, I apologize. No, no, that's, no, 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 I was about to say that. So that's interesting. What role does fear play in their unwillingness to change? A huge one, I think. How do you help them with, with that? When, when you see that fear start to crop up, what, is it, what does it look like for you? I'm, I, to be honest with you, and it's crazy because I am a certified coach. Uh, so I, sh- you know, I should be more comfortable with that. But most of my peers in the industry are not comfortable with coaching. I've actually had people in the industry saying, I don't want to be coached. Mm. So I'm really shy when it comes to using those coaching tools to try and make this fear more obvious. And or yeah. What it, how convinced are you of the value of coaching in these contexts? Huge, hugely. Hugely, but I have to, I have to tiptoe with it. It's a, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a loaded uh, question in the industry, in the, you know, in, in the workforce in general, you know, but especially in my industry, they, they're very operational people, um, yep. boots on the ground, like you said uh, before. It, so they don't want to shrink. Yeah, I've, I've had that too before. <laughs> Which right. I can understand because first I'm not a shrink, and you know they because I'm a very uh, my background is also very operational. So yeah, they they. So yeah, I, it's a fine line. I always have to look for this fine line. Right. Let me. I want to go back to the agenda for a second just to make sure we're on track. Uh, the way I wrote it down, just a little bit different, and I said uh, a process to embed change within is what I kind of summarized it in to help your prospects embed that change within themselves, like the desire to change. Uh, and, and what I'm hearing from you is the best way to help them get there is through coaching, but the whole industry resists that. How do you reframe what you're doing with them? while still coaching them. So they don't, they don't quite get that you're actually coaching. You're not manipulating by any means, but how no, can you no, no, no. That I don't know. Okay. That when, I don't know. When you're having those conversations where the coaching seems to be, gosh, this is what I need to do right in this moment to help them with that internal change piece. Um, what do you do? What happens that moment for you? It's getting better, but I used to freeze internally mm. and just and accept the person's response, basically, and just move on. How can you reframe it for yourself so you're able to still engage them in a way that ultimately will serve them? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe also because there's this, uh, perception of mine. I don't want to force them to do something. So I, and I have to change that perception because I'm here to, to help. So, you know, I'm not forcing anyone. I just want to help. And that's what I've always done in, during my career. Um, and I do a pretty good job when people let me. Uh, so I guess by asking questions, but I'm, I'm just not sure which, if there's one, I don't know if there's something like this, but if there would, would be one magic question mm. that could help trigger that um, change and, you know, get the conversation Go we'll further, go for further, basically. Right, and and the goal in these conversations is is what? If you were to be able to accomplish that goal in the conversation, what? How would you describe? You walk. Wow. Away, yeah. Go ahead. Well, you we I walk away with a, a signed contract or a new contract, or it, even a yes to an event to, or yeah, it's just. Uh, 
a yes to move forward together, basically. Okay. When you think about the key being there, the, the yes being the key there, what are some questions you can ask to get yeses from them as it relates to, to the change side of this conversation? That makes sense what I'm asking? Okay. So the, this very obvious question, it would be that uh, what happens if, uh, if, we don't, if you don't do anything, right? Um, Yeah, I have never tried that question yet. And I know it's crazy because it's a, it's a key question to ask. Yeah, I, maybe I should try that question more often. Sure. When's your next uh, meeting with a prospect? Ooh, uh, I have one tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow, yeah. <gasps> can, you, can you picture yourself or how can you picture yourself having that conversation with this individual if it comes to that point now much better now actually by having that conversation with you okay yeah what other what other questions because that's a great this is my opinion but that's a great question right what happens if you don't do anything that's a very powerful question that that opens up possibilities and it's also not a psychological woo-woo type question so you're, you're still skirting the edge of what a lot of people worry about with coaching um, which is unfounded worry, but, but anyway, that's a, again, my opinion on that. Um, let's see if you can come up with three more questions that you could ask when this moment props up so that you have a, a bank of questions in your mind that, that you, could, you could use. One, I know that one big thing that's come up, especially coming from corporations, you know, is around cost. Mm -hmm. And we all know it's crazy. So in a way it is, and in a way it is not. Because yeah, there are major budget cuts going on at the moment, but at the same time, there are major spendings happening. So in different areas, obviously, you know, it's a balance. But sometimes I've heard uh, not all the time, but sometimes I've heard people just objecting because of costs. Mm -hmm. And that one, I don't know how to go around because I know how it is to be to work for a big company. And I know what it is to deal with it, to work with a budget, you know, with a tight budget, and also to go um, uh, with, uh, with approvals from your, uh, from the highest level, from procurement, from all of those involved departments. And I know it's a pain. Um, and sometimes when you move to a certain amount of money, the, the level, number of approvals increase. So it's never fun. This is the non-fun part of working for a big corporation, right? So I have a hard time objecting to this. And so that questions, what do you do if you, if you don't, if what happens if you don't do anything? I don't think applies to this, right? To this situation if they go about the fact that it's too expensive, for instance. And um, so right now to answer your question is if I look for an, a, a question to bounce back on, a, uh, on that objection, I'm kind of stuck here, let me think. Sure. And if you have ideas, just let me know. <laughs> I do, but I, I want to let you think a little I bit. Know, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. I want, I'm cheating a little. Um, I don't know, because... Uh, can you guide me to it? Um, well, you're, you're saying that the objection is cost. Uh, one of the objections is, you know, there's, there's kind of only a yeah. certain set of objections in sales, but cost is one of the top ones, time, another one, et cetera. But um, I think if you go to the other side and you start asking them about the cost, if they don't do this, 
Well, that's the thing in the industry. Sorry to interrupt, Kyle. That's a big thing because uh, people have a hard time, and we've always had to put numbers, mm. exact figures on costs because putting a cost on a on nut preparing for a certain type of risk is extremely hard because the right? risk is unknown i would in, in a lot of cases obviously it's either known or unknown but it's really it's always hard to to envision the full scope of the impact sure right so that question i know and i have and i've tried it and each time I've had this answer, we're not sure about how much money that would cost. So we don't, we're not sure about the ROI, right? Yeah. And that's always been a, a big, big, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question in the industry. Sure. Two things come to mind. What stories can you tell to demonstrate the pain point, basically, uh, mm -hmm. of a similar organization? You know, and, yeah. and you don't have to answer that directly right now, but something to yeah. think about. Yeah. Um, because no, you're look, per what you're saying, obviously it's not a perfect fit that they don't know. There's no metrics on that, but maybe part of your work is to create those metrics in your it business. Is. So it's, it is it, as well. So it's a very, very good point. It is actually to uh, showcase that there are ways to measure what they do yeah. and um, to have those figures. Yeah. That they're missing right now. Yeah, the other the other angle is value, and obviously, in sales we got to demonstrate value, benefits, all that, and you know that. But how, what type of questions can you ask to get them to feedback the value that you provide to them? Does that make sense? What I'm asking there? No, I mean yes, it does. But can you give me an example? Um, if this part of the contract, whatever you're talking about here, were to go really well, if this strategy, if we were to implement this, implement this strategy successfully, what value would that bring to your organization, right? And then they they tell you what they think the value is. So there, you're embedding them this idea of of the value that you're providing, and they're coming up with what that value could be. Uh, so it's it's like you're reversing it. instead of having to explain it to them they're explaining it back to you why your contract is so good because <laughs> because yeah, okay. they're able to connect the dots of the value uh so just another angle it might not be a good fit it might be i don't know but no no it's a good one this one is a good one but i'm, I'm just thinking that it should be a question that i'm asking from the very beginning before the cost mm -hmm. uh doubt right. is actually mentioned so the this question doesn't doesn't come up at all right mm -hmm. And it sounds oh, like yeah. you would like for, for it to come up. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, no, no, yeah. No, it's, uh, no, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Because we have, we're short on time, we could go, we could talk about this a little longer, obviously, but because we're short on time, you've come up with a couple questions here. What do you want to do with those questions now? I want to practice during my next calls and Zoom calls and, uh, and discussions. How can you implement these questions into more of more into your business more as like part of your sales system? Thank you very much. <laughs> You've just given me some nice homework now. <laughs> cool. um, I have to think about this one. Okay. When do you want to think about that? Uh, once we hang up and you know in the next uh, few days but no seriously no no it's something i have to think about seriously okay and i'm gonna press you a little bit harder here when do you want to have a let's call it a draft of this system that we just mentioned here Oof. Um, i've made a commitment to work on something really big for my company during uh, december month so i will include this okay when will that be done? That draft of the part we're we're specifically talking about. By the by, the end of of December. By okay. I'm uh, my, my actually my commitment is to work through it uh, during the Christmas holidays. Okay, so first of the year you'll have a great draft in place for this the sales kind of system thing that we're talking about here. 
Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> no, not I'll try, but no, I'll, I'll it's, it will be a draft. Yes, it will be a draft. It might not be perfect on, on January 1st, sure. but it, there will be something different showcasing these questions on my website and on the way I approach uh, people, yes. Awesome, love it. From what we talked about today, what, in, what insight do you have or what new awareness do you have? Hmm. Uh, the, is, the the so it's it always amazes me each time it happens but just by the simple fact of discussing this with you not by email or you know but in conversation makes it sound much easier than I thought mm. and much more natural than I thought. Mm. So, yeah, I, of course I know that being a business owner uh, is very lonely and, um, but having a growth mindset, I think it's a huge opportunity to go out there and meet new people like yourself, Kyle, to have those conversations and be, be challenged with what I do, uh, how I do it, and everything else. So no, no, it's really cool. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, thank you for, for being willing to do this and being vulnerable on the on the uh, episode. And we we displayed what you said about your values. So I love it that, that you're able yes, to- Yes, exactly. You see? <laughs> do it by example, like you said. So uh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you.